conjectures. So a conjecture is a conclusion that you can make based on things that you have observed. So let me let me give you an example here because it's easier maybe to show by an example. Let's say I take the number 5 and I multiply that by 2. Well, 5 times 2 is 10. Let's pick another number and maybe it's 3. 3 times 2, well that's 6. Okay, uh, 8 times 2, that's 16. Um, let's try uh, 2 times 2, that's 4. So, so far I'm starting to observe, I'm starting to observe a pattern here that every time I multiply by 2, I seem to be coming up with an even answer. I'm going to try a few more here. Um, what if I try a, a two-digit number like uh, 13? 13 times 2, well, that's 26, still even. Um, I've done odd numbers, I've done even numbers. What about a two-digit even number? Let's do 24. 24 times 2, oh, 48. How about a three-digit number? 121 times 2. That would be 242. It's still even. So, based on all of this information, I'm, I'm ready to make a conjecture. I'm ready to make a conclusion that I can make based on these things that I have observed. And this is what my conjecture would be. My conjecture is that any number multiplied by 2 is an even number. And I could do a whole pile more of these, and in fact, the more I do, the more convinced I am of my conjecture. Because I haven't found any that haven't worked yet. Now, it's important to understand that this is not a proof. I haven't proven that if I take any number and multiply it by 2, that it's always an even number. Because I simply haven't done all the numbers here yet. Maybe there's one out there that I haven't found. But I, I'm pretty certain here now. I've done, I've done 7, and... Um, if I did a bunch more, I think I would still see that, that they would be an even number. So, But the more I would show you, the more convinced uh, hopefully you would be that when I'm multiplying a number by 2, I get, I get an even number. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm using a little um, technique that's called inductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is when you come up with a conclusion by observing a pattern. And so that's what was going on here. That's what enabled me to make this conjecture, is I saw a pattern here. Every time I multiplied by 2, it was an even number. So I used my inductive reasoning to say, anytime I multiply a number by 2, I get an even number. This would be another example. Say I, say I, was, uh, I just flew into a new city, and I'd never been there before. And let's say I, I had lived there for six weeks. And I noticed that every day on Tuesday in this city, it rained. So I could use my inductive reasoning, because I've seen a pattern here in this city, that every Tuesday it rains. Um, so I could make a conjecture. Every Tuesday in this city, it rains. And as long as it keeps raining on a Tuesday, that conjecture of mine continues to get strengthened and strengthened and strengthened. Until maybe one day, that it doesn't rain on Tuesday. And then I would have to throw my conjecture out because my conjecture is no longer true. Let's look at another bunch of numbers. Let's say I take the number 5 and I multiply it by 11. That would give me 55. Let's take the number 3 and multiply it by 11. That gets the number 33. How about we do 2 and multiply it by 11? 2 times 11, 22. 8 times 11, 88. So I might start to make a conjecture here because every time I multiply by 11, it looks like I'm just taking this first number here and writing it twice. So here's my conjecture. Any number multiplied by 11 is just the number written twice. 5 by 5. Five, 3 times 11, 3, 3. Uh, 7 times 11, 7, 7. But I've been just doing single uh, digits here. Like what if I went to 
13 by 11, then according to my conjecture, this should be 13, 13. Let's see what happens here. I got 13 times 11. Oh, 143. So my conjecture is no good. It just fell apart. Because what I've done is I've found a, what's called a counterexample. And a countered example is just an example that didn't match with my conjecture. It was, it was against. Counter means like against. Against what I've been, been doing here. So as soon as you find a counterexample, even if it's just one, your conjecture cannot be true. Um, because you've just found something that doesn't, doesn't work. Um, I guess what I could say is my count, uh, my conjecture uh, would work as long as I'm using whole numbers that are less than or equal to 9, um, or, or natural numbers rather, less than or equal to 9. Um, but as soon as I get into a two-digit thing, this thing's not working. So I cannot say any number multiplied by 11 is just the number written twice. So that's what conjectures are. They're just uh, guesses that we are making based on things that we have observed. And one of the ways we can come up with that is through inductive reasoning. By looking at the pattern and seeing that the pattern uh, fits for several, several examples. Again, the more examples that we can demonstrate, the more convinced we are of our conjecture. And if we do happen to come up with a counterexample, then pfft, our conjecture is no good.